Let's talk about bass fishing for a minute. <laughs> Sometimes the bass will stop, <laughs> thinking you have dropped the fly. The idea though is to keep stripping and keep tension on the fly rod, or else you will actually lose the bass, just like I demonstrated right here. One of the fun things about fly fishing, as with most fishing, is sight casting. And again, just walking along the banks in the nice weather here in the sunshine, you can see these bass off the shoreline. Very simple fly, and again, just a nice little bass. You'll find, too, amongst the pods, a lot of bluegill. And part of the trick is finding the, the bass that are mostly territorial by themselves, getting the fly to it before the bluegill come up and just snatch the whole deal away from you. But again, it's all part of the fun of the sport. Just like with the fly fishing tackle, rods and reels, if you walk into a fly shop or if you open up a catalog, you'll see thousands of flies, which are, which are fun because it makes for a big selection. But what we want to do today is just offer you just a couple flies that you could take with you, some of which you could even tie yourself, which are pretty simple to tie, and get on a pond or river and catch fish. One of them is a popper. And again, a popper is a topwater bug that will cause some disturbance in the water and to hopefully raise up a nice bass or panfish. And again, a popper, just like a lot of these flies, can be in different colors. Our favorites are generally the chartreuse and the black. Uh, and sometimes up. they're made of wood, sometimes they're cork, sometimes they're plastic. Each one, depending on the size, will give a different action in the water. So you make adjustments, obviously, accordingly, depending on what's working and what's not. A foam version of the popper is a foam spider or sponge spider. And again, simply just a, a wad of foam tied on a hook with some rubber legs. And again, just stripping through the top part of the water column causes a disturbance and hopefully will raise some fish. Another fly which is fished towards the bottom is the woolly bugger. Very classic pattern, can be tied in any sizes, any colors, uh, weighted, non-weighted, we have a gold bead head on here. And the bead head allows for a deeper sink or a quicker sink. If you don't want to get far down in the water column as quickly as you are, try tying or fishing a woolly bugger without the bead head. It's just as effective. And finally, a pattern that is developed by a green weenie, we call it the blini, which is basically nothing more than a red yarn tied onto a hook, a great subsurface pattern, and it works well. And the beauty of using yarn over chenille, which is a common fly material, is you can unply the yarn. When you unply the yarn, depending on the size of the hook, you can control how fat or how thin you want the body of the fly to be. And again, these are just some very simple, basic patterns that either you can get at a fly shop or some tie your own. We have some instructions too on how to tie some of these. Take these on the water and have some fun catching some fish. One of the basic fly patterns that, that people can tie, which is very easy, and can be used to catch a variety of fish, is called the woolly bugger. Besides the name itself, uh, a very fun fly to fish and can be tied in different colors. For our purposes today, uh, I'm gonna tie it in black body with a gold bead head. And this is a great color and, and uh, 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 bead head to use when you're catching uh, bass or panfish, even trout. A couple things you need uh, for tying is some glue, and we do recommend, uh, because you'll be working indoors a lot, is a water-based glue. Sometimes the fumes can be a bit much, so if you're especially tying during the winter, which a lot of us do tie. Mm -hmm. um, with closed windows. With closed windows, definitely use water-based. It, it'll, it'll help you. Another thing is just a pair of scissors, okay, to cut thread or to cut material. And again, now the thread they'll be using to tie, to put the material together, Thread comes in different sizes. For our purposes today, we'll be using a six aught thread. Uh, it also comes in eight aught, which is thinner, or three aught, which is thicker, and comes in a multiple amount of, of colors. And the material we'll be using is hackle, which is a feather. We'll be using yarn for the tail of the fly. Sometimes woolly buggers are also tied with a material called marabou. 
but for our purposes, I find yarn is a lot easier to tie with and makes a great tail. Also, we'll be tying with a material called chenille. This particular material has a little fleck, which will give the color if you're especially fishing in stained water. So again, these are just some of the basic materials that you can use for tying the woolly bugger. We're going to come around and up over the hook. And what that will do is it'll start winding the thread on the hook. We're going to start to come backwards over the tag end of the thread towards the bend of the hook. People get really crazy about the sizes or the measurements of the how fly. How many wraps? How many wraps? The fish don't read. Uh, just tie what you feel is a decent amount just to cover the hook. Also develops a nice base to tie the fly on. So we have our thread wrap done. We'll leave it hanging, take our scissor. We'll cut off the tag end. Also usually we'll have a bag to throw the material away. For purposes of today, I'll just put it in my box next to me so we don't get all over the place. Okay, after we get the thread on the hook, the next thing we will do is do the tail. And again, for our purposes of tail, we'll be using yarn. And again, the yarn, unlike marabou, will stay thin, easy to work with, will not flange out, which sometimes could be kind of a, a pain or a hassle to use. So I do like using yarn, I believe you do too, in your time. Absolutely. Okay, we're gonna come from midpoint of the hook. And this is, by the way, called the shank, if you wanna get technical. So we'll come from midpoint of the hook and we're gonna tie in our tail. People always ask what size, how, what's the length of the tail. Easiest way to do that is just to measure the length of the shank and that would be about the length of your tail. In all honesty, if you don't like that, just cut the tail short or leave it longer and cut as you finally get the fly done. Now, pinching with my two fingers, gonna keep the material on top of the hook, come around with my thread, with my two fingers and then come down on top of the material. And that's how you're going to start the tail of this fly. When I get that, I'm gonna to begin to wrap back a little bit. Oops, and we're gonna cut that off in a second. I'm gonna cut off the excess material. That's all. The other beauty of this fly is neatness doesn't count. You will also find that probably your worst tied flies are your best catching for the uh, fish because there's nothing perfect in nature. And it looks like an easy meal. An easy meal for bass, panfish, trout is a good thing. So we now have got our base. We have our tail in place. And again, it may be a little longer than you want. Don't worry about it. You can always cut at the end. We're going to cut a little off here right now. The next thing we're going to do is take our hackle. Again, the hackle is our feather. And what I like to do is come from the tip of the hackle, pull down on the feathers to allow them to flare out. Now, hackles come in different sizes, and there are things on the market called hackle gauges, where, for example, this is a size 10 hook. You can get hackle that's long enough for the right size hook you're using. If you don't have that, I wouldn't worry about it either. You can also cut to size, no big thing. I'm gonna find a spot on the hackle and I'm gonna start pulling the hackle fibers off or the hackle feathers off. And I'm gonna get a little section. So right now I have a hackle that's now prepared to tie onto the fly. Cut a little more off. onto the top of the shank of the hook, wrap forward onto the fly. So right now you have your tail, you have your hackle, and you have the basic body set with the gold bead head. The next thing we'll do is take a little of our chenille, or you can use yarn too, but for today, just so you see a little fleck, we'll use the chenille. We'll tie the chenille on towards the front of the fly. And again, with the pinch, wrapping down just to get the fly going. And again, I'm coming under and away on the hook shank, always. 
I'm going to wrap back on the fly, meeting all the other material that we have on the hook shank so far. Now I'm going to wrap forward again. What we're simply going to do, as we have wrapped under and away from us with the thread, I'm going to come down and towards me also here with the material. And with the chenille, I'm going to come forward and wrapping forward to the head. Now, when you're tying on the chenille, take the chenille away, forward on the hook, and just wrap over with the thread. A couple wraps will do. Then I'll cut this excess away. Some people say it's also a good idea to pull the thread away as you do the cut, which is also a good idea, but sometimes I, if you're cutting on top, it doesn't matter, it's okay. You then can take your hackle, start wrapping around. I'm doing this by hand. There's also another tool, more stuff, on the market called hackle pliers, which you also can use. They just grip the hackle for you. And again, just like the chenille, I have my hackle forward, I'm wrapping on the material. Then I'm cutting the excess off. We're almost done with this fly. Make a couple more wraps just to get it secured down. Then what I will do is come with three fingers, almost making a triangle, come back on the fly and start wrapping the whole thing down. And that, start locking all the material down on the fly. What I will then do next is do a particular uh, um, knot called a half inch, half hitch, which again, you simply loop it over the wrap and that will lock it all down. And again, it's not called a half hitch. You also can use it to tie the fly onto the leader, but also it's an easy way to lock down the thread onto the fly. Do about two or three. There's no standard per se. Some people argue with that, some people will not. But again, it'll lock it down just fine. Now, take the glue again, which is water base. Just a couple drops is just fine. The other thing I like about the water base is it does not give a scent, which some people argue other chemicals will, in my opinion. The water base leaves it free of any kind of scent. And it doesn't harm the water. And it does not harm the water, absolutely. Now, this is a little longer maybe than I want. No big deal. You just cut, and your woolly bugger is complete. So again, out today, not a whole lot of bass, a few. Almost got a few. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I got a perch. But, again, a lot of bluegill and just a beautiful day out here. And that's really what it is about. A couple just simple basic pieces of equipment, simple cast, and just a fun day with someone. And that's truly what it is about. If you want to find out more information about fly casting and fly fishing for still water species, bass, panfish, you can check out our website at www.realsimpleflyfishing.com or you can also check out the discussion group we run about fly fishing for still water species at thebluegilljournal.com. For Garden State Adventures, I'm Andrea Van Benskoten. And I'm Glenn Van Benskoten. We thank you for watching. And we hope you learned something and get out in the, the water. Get some fish. Bye. Bye. Hey, let's go.